We got a little wager going on here. We think that you may be missing something from your garden. Let's figure that out. We got to figure out what to get in our gardens that we're missing, and we got to make our gardens a little bit more stronger for next year because you never know. Right here on the Back Your Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome, gardeners and homesteaders alike. We are a listener-supported show, so if you'd like to help support us, please check us out on Patreon at Backyard Gardens, where you can get up to two extra episodes a month. And we are now doing a monthly giveaway starting very soon, if it hasn't already started, uh, where we will do a drawing for one-on-one call with our patrons. So you can come talk to us about mostly whatever you want. You can also buy t-shirts and stuff down to the links below for at teespring and just come subscribe to us on youtube and by the way my mic keeps falling over so i need a new mic there's that <laughs> <laughs> all right <clears throat> um and for all the new listeners out there my name is ben gardner and i garden in zone 8a and i'm with my wonderful co-host batavia who gardens in 6a like apple <laughs> Yeah, if you want to dig back, we did a zone episode where apple was not the term we used, but you'll have to figure that one out. <laughs> so, what are you missing from your garden? <laughs> oh, you know, I, this isn't the direction we were headed in, but the first thing that came to mind when you said that was fruit. Yeah, you have a, I know that you have a relationship with growing fruit that is not pleasant. Mm-mm. As do I. As do I. I have a a dramatic love-hate relationship with growing fruit, I could say. Um, Yeah, you know, it's funny. Every year, this is a time of year where I go out and I begin to reflect on my garden. And I look and say, like, hey, what am I growing? What am I not growing? What worked well? What didn't work well? And it's, it's very useful going into this part of the season because for me this is when the research comes mm-hmm. in the seed shopping mm-hmm. by the way all my seeds are purchased by the end of 2022 by the end of the year the calendar year i have all my seeds for the next year purchased so that's me i gotta get them discounts dog I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> i was actually this morning thinking to myself like you know you, it's kind of like shopping your closet I need to to shop my seed baskets and 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 like I, do I really need to buy any more seeds became the question. Yeah, you know, I did that last year. I did look it's 4 minutes in and we're going off subject already, <laughs> but that's okay. Um last year I did that. I went through all of my seeds. I did two things. One, I went and picked out everything I wanted to grow online based off of memory of what I had in my seeds. And then I pulled out my seed vault and I started digging through it. And you know that how much money I saved? How much? $80 by going through and looking at all the seeds that I oh, had. Wow. And I definitely made some concessions about like, you know what? I can just grow mm-hmm. this this time. It's not mm-hmm. a big deal. I did do some of that, but I saved a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's also a little bit of a luxury, you know, it's kind of like the, the shiny new thing is, you know, looking at the seed catalogs, looking at the website saying, oh, you know, you saw a video that Ben did and said, you know, I want to try that variety. Um, but it's a little, I mean, it's it can absolutely lead to spiraling, if you will. There's seeds yeah. that I've purchased that I've not even used yet. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So there's a one set of seeds that I was like, oh, I tried a, a new um, new online site to purchase um, something a little bit more local to me. And a bunch of the seeds did really. I applaud that. Oh, thank you. A bunch of the seeds did really, really well. But there were a couple that just didn't germinate over and over again. And so I've been meaning to write into them. But then I was like, oh, I want to check these other seeds, too. You know, but. I haven't stopped to do that because I don't plan on growing those things, you know, with what's left of the year, you know? So with that said, it's the, you know, buying the, 
the pair of jeans or, you know, the dress and you never go out and use it, you know, but it made me feel good to buy those things in that moment. I don't have problems with clothes like that. I just buy them and then ruin them right away. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, you remember pumps? No. You don't remember the pump shoes? Oh, that you oh yeah, up? yeah. Like the, on the, um, the tongue of the shoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I begged for them. Look, I don't play basketball. <laughs> I don't even touch a basketball. I do other kinds of sports, but I wanted some pumps. I got me some pumps. My mom, she dug deep. God bless her. Saved the money. Got them for me. The next day, the next day, I went and walked in the creek and lost one of them in the damn creek (laughs) in the mud. And she made me go back. And my stepdad went with me. He was like, you get in and you start digging, boy. You're going to get that shoe. (laughs) I had to wear one clean shoe and one dirty ass shoe. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) I'll never forget that. I was like, man, and my son does the same thing now. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Everybody out there knows that what goes around comes around. <laughs> but no, it's um, back to the gardening and not pumps. Shout out to the 80s. Um, it, it's, you know, finding your seed source and going through is is really important to me. And I enjoy shopping for seeds but i also hate shopping for them like i just hate it and if you if you follow me on youtube you're gonna figure out one of two things one i'm thrifty as hell (laughs) two i like to reuse everything and three i don't know you tell me what you figure out but you know (laughs) bottom line is i'm pretty damn thrifty so there's that but once i started saving seeds that made it a lot easier Mm -hmm, too mm -hmm. because i'm definitely going to grow what i've saved yeah but you know when you get to the volume of what you've saved you know a lot of cases a lot of cases what you save i mean i actually have some lettuce that back earlier in september that was still sitting um in the container like seeds you know everything's gone to seed i just pulled them off of the plant like the seeds and then scatter them in my attempt to plant them this fall. And I was saying to myself, this really works better for me. I don't have to go into the house, dig through my seed pile, figure out which variety. I'm just going to take these. But I mean, there are going to be hundreds, if not thousands of seeds when I finally do take them off. You know, yeah. um, so I said that to say, like, all you're doing now is adding to that pile, which ultimately you'll probably never use all of all of all of them. That's when you just give them to your seed saving buddy. Yeah. So, by the way, I'm going to be sending you a list soon of seeds and I'm going to put a package together and send them to you. And on that note, everybody that's been signing up for the seed giveaways, we are doing them every month. We're now going to do them over the winter all at once. So, everybody that's gone to Backyard Gardens TV and signed up for the seed giveaways, we decided just to do it all at once. So you get your seeds in the winter time and you can plan your gardens accordingly. Mm-hmm. It makes a lot more sense and it's a hell of a lot easier mm-hmm. on us. So I had poor little David, my son, stamping envelopes the other day and he was like, Daddy. <laughs> I was like, what? He was like, I'm getting swole. <laughs> <laughs> He's tripping. But um, let's get into the topic about what are we missing? So... <clears throat> This is the time of year, like we said, where we go out and we figure out what we're missing. But how do we categorize what we're missing? I don't even know if I used the right word. How do we determine, that's the right word, what we're missing? I, so I started a list this morning, not necessarily for this episode, but it kind of falls directly in line. So I took it more of like herbs, right? Then I moved on to... Um, kind of leafy things, brassicas. And I started kind of putting under herbs the things that I really, really want and the things that are kind of just like, you know, oh, that, that'd that be okay, you know. So basil is something that I continue to really want to grow a lot of, you know. And then um, rosemary is something that I'm just like, eh, I don't really need that in my garden if I, you know. I mean, I probably still yeah. got two bottles of rosemary, you know that I'm still using. Um, So I tried to categorize it and I'm not done with it. So I don't know if that's really going to work for what I'm trying to get to. Um, But I had to try to make to your point, rhyme or reason out of like, do I have enough pesto put away? I don't. So that leads me to basil and there is nothing like fresh basil 
going into your pesto, even with me freezing it, you know? And so that's one of the methods I'm using for at least that type of crop to figure out, okay, do I pull back on one of these herbs? Do I eliminate some of them? You know, do I focus, you know, doubling up, tripling up or whatever have you on others? Um, it gets a little bit harder for other vegetables just because then you have those seasons that flow in, you know? So is my list now going to be based on each season? I don't know. Well, I think that's part of how we should go about it is looking and seeing like, you know, especially if you're a multi-season gardener, mm-hmm. it, it, it gets tough because there's a lot of overlap. But I think this is, <clears throat> you know, as as we start looking into each season, I think we can identify you know, especially as the years go on for gardening, like, hey, I want to try something new. I want a different variety. You know, like I know you're big into growing things that look different and you want to try You basically want to, I mean, Batavia wants to grow everything once at least. <laughs> everything in the world. Right? Everything. No, you know, um, I am absolutely on the quest of the best of in my garden. Right. You know, so if I'm growing it, I want it to be the best of what, you know, that comes out of the garden. I want I grew corn this year. It's the best tasting corn that I've had in as many years as I can remember. Right. You know, and so am I going to search again for a different kind of corn? Lord knows, I hope I don't hear about anyone loving a different variety of corn because that's the corn I'm going to grow next year. You know, and so I'm not saying that I'll never grow a different variety of corn again, but I'm settled in that particular vegetable for a minute, you know, and so and the variety is not I'm not going to get it at my local grocery store. And that's another kind of tick off. I'm not I don't think I'm going to go by season. Um, It's going to naturally happen. I'm basically going to be doing kind of cool weather crops and, you know, heat loving crops. And then when I get to the cool weather crops, I'll decide um, whether or not I'm going to grow them in spring and fall. I'm going to tell you something. Tell you. Tell me. I want to hear it. Tell me. Please tell me. This is late breaking. I was out of time. (laughs) I was uh, picking some um, some kale which, you know, I tout the idea of being able to grow things like collards and kale all through the season. And the reality is most of my kale, unless I have the wrong variety, most of my kale basically is stagnant during the summer months. And by the time I get to fall, it's aphid ridden. Right. And I know how you feel about, you know, just rinse them off. But once those aphids have been lamping for a minute, you know, especially with one of my favorite varieties, the curly kind of kale, it's hella hard. So the late breaking is maybe I should really just be thinking about growing those in the spring, early, early spring, and then maybe planting again in the fall going into winter. Like there's something to be said about older plants, you know, and attracting those insects, something that's been in my garden for like five months or something. Um, And so that's actually like, I didn't eat a lot of kale this summer. Why not? I had some of the other things I was eating and enjoying. I was trying to get through my, all my yeah. lettuce before it bolted, you know? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So I, I think for me, that's a way of, do I have enough kale in my garden now? Right in this moment? No. But I don't have enough to get me through these fall months is what the issue is. Am I growing enough of that? Right. And if I think about it, like the space that I dedicated to that, those kale plants all throughout the summer could be used for something else. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a real good point. I mean, look, your your garden's full, you know, and your garden's full of what I would consider cool weather crops. Are you saying me as in way. Batavia? Yeah, okay. you. Yeah, you. Uh, by the way, you need to harvest those turnips. <laughs> yeah, they're, uh, they're too so, big. <laughs> so one, they're not too big. Two, I told my great aunt that I was going to harvest them for breakfast yesterday. And she said, um, well, you better hope they're still out there. And then I'm like, all panicked, like, you know, cause she's convinced that animals are just coming in and eating all of my crops. Um, and so they were still out there. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah they're big. Um, the, but the turn you know, of bottom isn't big, but the leaves are probably at the point of like, they're beginning to bolt. But anywho, you know, how I, I roll, you know, I, I like these vegetables big. I like big vegetables and I can't not lie. That's what I'm talking about. Um, but I, I lost where I was going with that because you, you stopped me. 
I have a lot of cool Bro, weather like crops a, in my garden. Yeah, you have a lot of cool weather crops. So if you if you pull those out and you go into warm weather, you start to get into a situation where I'm like, what am I going to grow? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like I have issues with summer crops where I'm like, I have the space, but I don't want to grow as much mm-hmm. of something. So I end up growing more than I really want. Now, I definitely get some loss. And especially in the summertime, it was like I was saying in, um, I think I was planning my fall garden, did a video about starting my fall garden. And um, I was saying I drive around and everybody in my neighborhood or not my neighborhood in my area they, their gardens are totally empty, mm-hmm, completely mm-hmm. empty. And I'm like, I'm like the only one, one of the few that has food left in their yard. And it's weird to me, but people have totally abandoned their gardens because it just gets so hot and dry here that things get to struggle. And it's like you you start to have that issue where it's like, OK, it's now the middle of summer. I've pulled things out of my garden what can I add in its place? And that's kind of the issue that we kind of, we, you know, you come up with and then you start figuring out, well, what am I missing from my garden this time of year? What can I add this time of year? Maybe I need something that germinates quickly, something that's very heat tolerant, something that doesn't take up a lot of space. Maybe you need to fill a lot of space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you wanted something to take up. I mean, there's like all these different things, you know, um, I'm doing like I'm doing a second crop of tomatoes right now. So this is my first year where I like legit was like, I'm doing a second crop of tomatoes starting right now. So then you have that, you know, you can do that as well. But at that point, I reused some tomatoes that I had left over from my seedlings and I could have started a whole new type of tomato at that mm-hmm, point. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's a whole new, you know, different crop of something else. I mean, it's just there's so much that we can take into account during this time frame well, to set us up for next year. There's also the what do you miss? Not what are you missing, but what do you miss? So I'm at the yes. very end of my cucumbers and I already miss having fresh cucumbers, right? You know, especially now that we're getting right to the point of like, we're getting lettuce greens. And so I was thinking that I finally didn't grow way more cucumbers than any person could, you know, should be allowed. I finally did that. But if I would have come back in with like three weeks after I planted my initial seeds with another batch somewhere else, I'd be like right on the end of healthier plants, not healthy necessarily, because it is what it is once you come out of summer, you know, cucumber plants always take a beating. But that's an example of I've planted way too many. This year I planted just just under too few. Right. And now I kind of because and I'm sitting, you know, and this will probably come out like in October. Right. So I'm sitting and I'm saying, you know, last month. In September, I was like, you know, I could enjoy cucumbers. I would really want to enjoy cucumbers for another month. And I can't buy them in a the store. I just can't let myself do that yet. You know? Yeah. Um, and so that's insert cucumbers for any other plant that you can continue to grow from this point on. I'm not convinced when it comes to the summer stuff, like all these people are like, go ahead and sow a squash plant now in Chicago. And no, 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 it, it, it ain't know- happening. You don't know that. You don't know until you try it. And if you have a little extra space, it's something that can be done. You know, I did it. I started my butternut squash. I think it was in very late June. And at the time of this recording, my plant is now 30 feet long. So it's continued to produce and make it more and more. Now, you you said that this is coming out in October. This kind of kicks off our planning series of series is mm-hmm. mm-hmm. for moving forward. So we're throughout the winter, we'll have sections of the podcast where we will actually be talking a lot about planning because this is winter. It, to me, winter can be the most stressful time because I'm, I'm now reflecting and working on my garden and thinking things out like this. And I mean, the best thing to do in my mind is literally look at your kitchen and say, hey, what did I not eat last year? What mm-hmm. can I eat more mm-hmm. of? What would be something really cool to grow mm-hmm. that would be really good to eat? And then you can start kind of researching. Because, I mean, you know, for me, what is so this has nothing to do with food gardening. I really, 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 really want to grow a Japanese larch bonsai tree, mm-hmm. right? And so I was looking into it. 
and they only grow they grow best in zones four to seven i'm in zone eight you know what that means that means i can't grow that you know what I mean? And so you could move, you could take that to anything, some kind of fruit tree or something like that, you know? And it's like, we both said we have a love hate relationship with fruit. And it sounds to me like you're attempting to do, maybe thinking about doing more fruits and stuff like that as I am. So as we move forward, that's going to be something that's like really on our minds. Right. So we can start researching that and looking into that because I know there's something that you want to have more into your diet mm-hmm, as far mm-hmm. as like fruits go, you know? Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm getting on with the, uh, the more fruit, like actually taking action with it. Um, this is probably going to be the most important thing that I do this winter. And I've shared this, um, in a video, you know, recently, I'm going to be, or I'm about to share it. I'm not sure of the schedule, uh, but I am going to be looking back because I've grown a lot of different things over these last handful of years. And yeah. that's hence the list of what herbs do you really, really, really love? So a thing that I do, and we've, I mean, I think we are pivoting a lot, just kind of folding this into life because that's what it is. So a thing that I had to do probably six, seven years ago, maybe not that long ago, maybe about five years ago, I decided buy the outfit, buy the shoes, buy the blouse, buy it if you really love it, you know? So if I go to try it on and I'm just like, eh, you know, it'll do, then put it back on the rack, right? You know, and so buy it if you really love it. In this case, as I go into next year, I want to grow it because I really love it. I'll set aside a little spot for the experiments, you know, my garden, right? You know, yeah. little, that's, that's, I mean, it runs through my blood, right? But grow it if you really love it, you know? And so there are going to be years where it's like, you know, I'll be even more experimental than I plan on being next year. A part of it is coming off of kind of a tougher year with some crops. And so now it's kind yeah. of like you want to play it a little bit more safe. That's where I am in my space. Right. But I also if we go back to the aphids, there's also a mixture of how much work these crops are are requiring. So how much work are you putting into that blouse that you really are just like eh, about? Yeah. You know? So that ties back into the kale. Like I'm maintaining this. The soil is feeding these kale plants that are being attacked in, you know, July. You know, so what we've proved with those turnips is that I can plant some things in July and get a quick harvest, you know, in the midst of the heat. Right. You know, so something I mean, obviously, it's like a month and a half later, but that's key because I don't have to worry about having my beds continue to be full with spring crops as we go into the summer. Spring spring crops that will suffer. Well, and I think you got to ask yourself this one question. And I I never thought about this until this conversation, really. But what kind of gardener are you? Are you the kind that like Batavia who wants to grow one of everything and try different things? And I'm I'm using that very loosely, Mm -hmm. just so you know, like I know that you don't want to grow one of everything, literally. Mm -hmm. But tomatoes is one of your quests, Mm -hmm. right? So for me, I'm just on the search for my constants and my perfect garden to sustain my family as much as possible. So for me, it's like I have my, you know, I have my Romas. I I like my Roma tomatoes. They're standard. They're going to be in every year. I'm still at this point really searching out for an indeterminate tomato that I can do the same. You know, I'm looking for that perfect Mm -hmm. one. I'm not even close to finding it just for the record. But then, you know, there's other things like I've tried different kinds of okra and I'm just looking for the one that I want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not looking to grow everything. I don't care about growing, you know, for different things, for different looks necessarily. Like I grew green beans for a long time. Now I grow purple beans and I like those and those are going to stay in my garden from here on out. So mixing in life again. You know, it's the couple that maybe their childhood sweethearts really haven't dated anyone else, but they know, you know, they are meant to be together. Right. Um, And then there are people that, you know, date in their younger years and, and maybe they find the connection they've been looking for later in life. And then they know, okay, that's who, you know, it's going to be. 
And then there are people that never do either of those, either of those things. So there's some things in the garden that are like that first couple, right? You know, you get it, you grow it, you know it. This is it. It's always going to be in my garden. Yeah. You know, and then there are some folks that are just like, you know what? I I need to figure out of these tomatoes, which variety, which slicer do I really like? I'm going to test a few out over these years. And there are some folks that are like, I'm indifferent. You know, I... Yeah. I don't necessarily need to have a, a old standby, you know, like, you know, every year I grow a tomato, it's, it's great, you yeah. know, uh, and it can be a different variety every year. And that's all three of those scenarios are okay in the garden. Um, I think it does go back to the, I wrote down constants, right? You know, what are the constants? Because the idea is there's a level of security with that. Right. You know, so yeah. you uh, by now know how this plant's going to perform, Right. Like there's obviously some years that you get surprised, but you continue to grow it because I assume you love it. It fits the need that you're trying to address. And and that's that, you know. And so I'm going to say that I don't I didn't necessarily have that five years ago, four years ago. And so this quest is trying to develop those constants. Well, for me, it's like, um, you know, for the Romas, I know how they grow. But also, I know how I'm going to use them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know how I'm going to preserve them. Um, You know, eggplant's a big one. I cheated on my old standby eggplant for the past couple years, and I haven't liked Mm -hmm. it. So I'm going to go back to my original love, my first love, and that's Ichiban eggplants. You know, I'm going to go back to those. Um, You know, so as you move through the years, you definitely stray a little bit. And I did that last year. I did not grow a single red tomato. Or so that means I didn't grow aroma. I grew an orange banana tomato in its place, and I hated mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. I hated not have everything that I made was orange. Everything like I just it wasn't for me. So now knowing that, I know that hey, I can mark this off the list. And it does suck to do that. And I mean, the one thing I would say is if you're if you're branching out in what you're doing, then you definitely need to come. You know, I would not say like if you if you really like growing. Um, pumpkins mm-hmm. but you want to grow um, sweet pie pumpkins I think that's what they're called anyways the smaller pumpkins okay. like do a little bit of both so you still get your constant while you're figuring it out you don't have to sacrifice completely you know what I mean yeah yeah I mean there's a lot to figure out there because I mean you don't always there there yeah you don't always have the room or the room really to do that with many vegetables right um, yeah. So I think like we talked, we've talked about this a bunch of times. This wasn't a great tomato year, meaning I wasn't able I mean, if the production for fresh eating was good, but I was producing for fresh eating and for preserving. And that hasn't been great for me. And so with that in mind, I look back and say, I had a pretty good tomato year last year, but nothing like the year before that. So fortunately, I still have sauce from the year before that. So two years ago, sauce, right? Yeah. And so I was actually thinking about it going into last year, like, oh, I have so much sauce. Maybe I'll go light on tomatoes. And I didn't, you know, but it actually there's that balance of the risk associated with that. So if you had a kick butt butternut squash year, right, you know, and you have young Ben, so much butternut squash picked up, picked out, harvested and preserved then perhaps you're not planting it in 2023. And in turn, you can do that whole, I'm going to plant two different types of of pumpkins. But you can't... I did that last year. Yeah, you can't keep everything on the list and then still be experimental in that same way. No, so the year before, I picked like 30 butternut squash off of my plant. And then come spring, I mean, we were still eating it, and it was like, ugh, we're eating it Mm -hmm, again. mm -hmm. So I didn't grow it for a year. Um, it's not something that I love anyways. And there's always that aspect of it, but because I grew it, I ate it, but that allowed me to use that space. Like, I mean, like I said, this year is another one of those years where my butternut squash is 30 feet long and growing. Uh, it is starting to show its age. It's starting to wind down, but it's still growing and I'm still getting squash. I got four squashes. I pulled off yesterday. I've left laying out in the yard. I got to go get them for the ants do. Um, so, you know, that being said, I probably won't grow it next year. Depends on how I feel 
by the spring, but I always, you know, you, you don't buy a pack of seeds, plant some, and throw the rest mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have some seeds. Yeah. So it's like maybe, you know, maybe you want to hold off a year. Maybe you don't, but you always have that option. And that's the thing, too, is leaving your options open like that. You have the option, too, but then as far as your criteria, let's call it, you know, when it comes to are you getting enough out of your garden? Could you be getting more out of your garden? You also have to consider kind of how prolific a plant is. A, yeah. a, a, a you know vegetable or whatever it is so i was um i was looking and saying you know for butternut squash every time you talk about butternut squash there's like a million of them you know and so and so recognize that right you know when i was talking about basil earlier i was looking at some pretty healthy plants that i have and i was just like oh gosh i just love a bed of basil that's what i want yeah. right you may see a bed of basil in my garden next year and you know what's going to end up happening i'm gonna love it and then that following year, I'm going to pull back and say, I had my fair share of basil, <laughs> you know, the previous yeah. year. And that's OK, because I'm not looking for my forever um, garden plan or planting plan. You know, I'm not looking for it, it to be I'm planting this exact same way, these exact same vegetables from now on out. Right. They're going to be years. It's going to ebb and flow. There are going to be years where certain plants I go heavier on compared to others. Right. And that's, I mean, for sure, one way is to try to keep it interesting for yourself. So I do want to say something, Um, you know, the plan of the podcast is eventually to have Batavia and I sit next to each other and do the podcast. But I do want to say one thing. We got to work on your hand movements because you would have just slapped me in the face if we were sitting close by. Yeah. (laughs) You get the waving your hands bad. Listen, I am. I have uh, like I'm right sitting right in the sun right now and I don't even know if it it, it may have to be Chicago because if it's North Carolina I don't know if I could survive the heat I'm over here like if I what my, what did my grandfather say it's not that hot just don't move and it's like it's not even 80 in my house when's the last time you saw me wear sleeves <laughs> good point good point that's I mean you know enough said <laughs> but you know there's also parts of our gardens that we want to change mm-hmm, as well mm-hmm. And so we've we've kind of talked about, you know, recognizing what you want to grow, what you want to eat, researching how these plants grow. Um, you know, this year I'm doing peanuts. Now, I gambled hard mm-hmm. on my peanuts, um, FYI. And I'm going to be doing a video about the same time this comes out. It might be a week old where I'm going to harvest my peanuts and I'm going to know if I didn't if I wasted a space in my garden or not. And I'm, I, I got to I got to say something. I'm nervous <laughs> because that's my best performing garden bed gets the most sun. And I'm a little nervous that I've waited because my original plan was to harvest them in early September. And I went back and I read and they were like, you know, in North Carolina, it's usually late to mid October mm-hmm. before they are harvested. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what I read and we're going to see what happens. Um, but you know, if that's the case, if it's good, great. If it's not, then I've totally gambled and wasted all of that. So we'll see what happens there. Um, my hands started sweating as I started talking about it. It made me super <laughs> nervous. Well, you know, you just don't want to waste space. And that's in part of this is like, that was something I recognized through our garden challenge last year was, I wanted to grow more proteins and stuff in my garden. Mm-hmm. And then I started getting in and this happens every year. Like I walk in with a plan, things don't work out the way I want. And so then I start adding stuff and the peanut section grew from a quarter of the bed to three quarters of the bed. So, you know, that's just kind of part of that's my method too, you know, cause I don't want my worst fear is to have an empty garden bed in the middle of summer and being like, shit, what could I put in there? Yeah, you know what I mean? I've been there as well. And I think I just, I, because of garlic in particular, actually, I did a really good job at coming back around quickly and replanting that bed. But there are another couple of spaces where I pull spring things out and I kind of got stuck. It was an analysis. What is it? Paralysis analysis or the ver- which, however, which way you say it. And I think maybe I just, I've come to terms with it. You know, like I definitely could have gotten more out of it, but I'm also telling you that I got kale that's sitting there that's looking kind of nasty, you know? And so, um, so there is that, I think a part that I'm excited about 
if I'm able to go into next year and say, you know, can can I get more out of my garden? And more just doesn't mean um, pounds of food. It's not that's not what I what I think about it. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. You know, more satisfaction, more joy, more fulfillment, you know, uh, more tastier vegetables and herbs and maybe some fruit. Um, like That's the more that I'm talking about. And I think I have enough data at this point to try to give it a good go. Because, I mean, have you been working at it for three years? N- yeah, this is the fourth okay. year. Oh shit, we're late. Yeah, man. That's it. Yeah, man. That ship sailed. No, no, no. We don't. It'll be a lukewarm <laughs> reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Look at here. Oh, yeah, you got a good point. Yeah. So uh, we were supposed to have this conversation last year going into this year. Well, no, no one told me. Um, no one told you. But yeah, so it's. I was looking at my peppers. And so this year I had a really good pepper year. Sweet and um, and hot. And so I'm going to figure out, do I need as many peppers as I'm growing? And quiet is kept. I love you for saying that. Quiet is kept. (laughs) Uh, Peppers have been really easy for me to grow. Lord knows I don't want to say this and and let this replay next year. (laughs) But it's it's been really easy. And that's and I tend to lean into that when you kind of get your starts out. It's like, all right, what do you have left? You know, like it's like, all right, yeah. got a whole bunch of peppers here. Um, however, I'll be able to get an idea of quantity, right? Like I've had some shitty pepper years, like over my garden history. It's kind of like, oh, I love bell peppers, and it's like, I'm sorry, Mama, I got like three. Like I, I give you half of yeah. one, you know. Um, and this year, I gave my uncle. Uh, he brought me an eight foot ladder and his prize was the first red tomato, the first true red slicer out of my garden, you know? And so again, you, different space, different feeling about it all. Um, to you, that's a big deal to him. He was like, thanks for the tomato. But he also has a spoiling I appreciate pineapple it. tomato that's sitting on its counter. He's like, it still has to turn red. I'm like, it's never going to turn red. <laughs> I mean, you see any any, uh, gnats in there, you know? (laughs) Yeah. um, So what are you growing? What do you want to grow? Like, damn, I'm stuttering over my words. What have you identified as something you want to grow new for next year? Um, Can I say more? I haven't identified anything I want to grow new next year. Not yet. No, no. All right, why don't you answer and come back to me? Leonard, what do you what do you think? So, I have been testing out some things over the past two years, and one of them I've sat here on this show and said that I would never grow. I said two things that I would never grow. What are you doing? Why are you shaking your head at me and, like that? Why are we doing this? Eyes. Yeah, why are we doing I feel like, this? I mean, right, Roundhog say, go ahead. Uh, corn. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I'm really going to dive into corn next year. I've tried to beat the clock a little bit and um, planned it later, but I need to just kind of go all in. Is that new to you? It, corn? Yeah. I've never grown corn. I've never harvested an ear of corn. Oh, did, I thought you grew it this year. Uh, Yeah, oh, it, it's not okay. doing right, well I because I waited I too you. long to plant it. Because my whole goal was like, hey, I, I was like, I can plant it later. And then use this space and then fill it back in. And that just didn't work mm-hmm. for me. So it's one of those things where I really want to focus on. Um, my wife has been getting on me for the past two years about it. I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying. But I don't think that I've tried the best mm-hmm, that I can mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to get it. So, um, you know, I've done the same thing with Brussels sprouts over the years. And I'm kind of honing that in mm-hmm. now. And it's okay if it takes a couple years for me. Like, I'm not overly concerned because i have a big enough garden where it's like hey if this one small space fails like whatever so we've been able to get a fair amount out of our garden in different sections so it should work out pretty well if i planned it early i see everybody and i really focus on what other people in my area mm-hmm. were doing i decided to stay off of um the internet and different things like that and just really look at what people were mm-hmm. doing and that was one thing is um squash and uh, corn were planted very early Mm -hmm. and then when the corn was done that was all pulled everybody pulled it so it's interesting to kind of see that unfold yeah I don't know if there's as much kind of um, staggering of corn Um, so I uh, 
a gardener that I follow that's in the Midwest plants corn as late as like, I think, 4th of July weekend. Yeah. Um, so so there's that. So I I can appreciate it. And it, it's I feel like I want to say get out of my head because I was thinking about corn in particular. Um, I don't know if you've seen the little boy that talks about loving corn. The little I'm going to send you the clip if you haven't seen it. It has to be the most adorable no. thing that I've ever seen. He just loves corn. So anyway, I, I love it, too. Um, and I and, you know, we won't talk about health real or perceived health benefits um but i was thinking to myself again focusing in on the things that i love and planting more of it you know it's like i may need to dedicate a bed to corn i mean i may, I may need to do. step into that bed. you know the whole bed is going to be corn not just a couple here mm-hmm, and there but the whole mm-hmm. damn thing and focus on yeah. it and then i did that garlic. last year oh, on the uh one of the raised beds well Last year, in one of the raised beds that sits on top of the concrete patio, I grew successfully sweet corn, but it was like right in the middle of the bed and I had potatoes around it, you know, and so I'm thinking I could have gotten many more ears. I mean, I'm not putting away corn for a year, nor do I necessarily want that. Um, There are many other things I want to do in my garden to to try to grow that much corn. But anywho, um, I look and I say for um, for the corn, for example, um, especially with plant, with crops that I'm not as familiar with growing. This is this year's the second year for growing corn. Am I getting an, enough out of my garden? I need to make time and space for maintaining that vegetable, right? You know, so my peppers, as going back to that, are on autopilot, right? You know, so I, they don't need a lot of babying for me. The more you introduce to your garden, especially if it's new, the more time you have to spend tending to that thing. You know, and so does it end up leading to you neglecting some other things? Uh, Every year, there is something that just, you know, is abandoned in my garden every year. No matter what size my garden has been, that's been the case. And I've come to terms with that. I'm not beating myself up about that. Um, But there are definitely some things that like, um, like I, I let the cauliflower get away from me this year. Finally got some cauliflower growing at multiple heads. And I look up and it's like, oh, yeah, that's not as tasty as I would have liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's again, it's the there was a lot to focus on. Right. You know, a lot to try to manage through. That's why I'm teetering on being OK with having some empty spaces because they I mean, plainly put there's only so much a person can manage. Yeah, I can. I mean, that's the damn truth. And that's why I want to do like a whole bed of corn because then I only have to manage one bed of mm-hmm, corn mm-hmm. and that whole bed is used up. You know the risk what I mean? is if something happens with that one bed, that's your entire corn crop. Yeah, you know, but whatever. Mm-hmm. It's better than what I've got now. <laughs> I got nothing. I got a big fat nothing. All right, everybody. Look, let's take a break from this and then we are going to come back with the recipe of the day. All right, everybody, since we were talking about corn, I started thinking, why not find a corn recipe? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to give you cornbread, so there you no, go. Oh, shoot. We are going to give you uh, corn fritters. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. So, two, two benefits of that. One, you can grow your own corn, or you can go get it for like 10 cents an ear at the grocery store. It's probably tail end of the season right now, so you can still get it. Um, I'm going to read you the recipe. I've had this recipe. I did not cook it, so I have to read it to you, but it was very good. Um, It's two corns on the cob. So this will give you about 10 fritters. It's two corns on the cob, five tablespoons of medium cornmeal, one tablespoon of flour, one tablespoon of corn flour, salt, two eggs, um... 100 milliliters of buttermilk. I have no idea the measurement for that. You're going to have to convert it yourself. Sorry. Four spring onions, one jalapeno, finely chopped, and then oil. So, yep, it's going to be fried. Uh, We're going to mix the oil, the cornmeal, flour, all that salt into a bowl, combine it, and then you're going to um, 
And that, the eggs go in that too. And then you whiz them. You whiz. <laughs> I'm reading the website. You whip them together. And then you take the, uh, half of the kernels and you put them in. And you're going to have to shave them off the corn cob. And you're going to blend them in. And then you're going to put in the rest. And you're going to just kind of mix it by hand. And then you um, put the batter, make like pancakes, and you can fry it that way. So, and then once you're done with that, we top them with hot pepper jelly that we Mm -hmm. made from our garden. So, if you have not made hot pepper jelly, you should make hot pepper jelly. And I could very well be doing a video on that soon. I think I'm going to have enough peppers to make hot pepper jelly. So might want to check on that because for us that is the highlight of the year is making hot pepper jelly because when you put it on anything like this <laughs> and you put a little bit of butter mm-hmm, on it mm-hmm. whew, papa bear's hungry so you said two ears of corn right yeah that's the makes 10 that's fritters. the beauty of this you know so some of the things that we grow it's kind of like you need like how many tomatoes do you need to make like a couple of quarts of tomato sauce or a couple of pints right you need a shit done um but here's a whole you know side or addition to your meal from two single ears of corn yeah and i mean dude add more corn Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what i mean add more corn you know get crazy we actually uh we also put spinach in it as well i don't know about all of that now Sometimes we'll we'll saute the spinach down till it's nice and dry, mm-hmm. and then mix it in. You can't even taste it. Gives it a little bit more. Makes me feel a little bit better. Like I'm not just eating like full carbs all the way in sugar. I guess. Look, you don't you don't get to tell me how to eat my food. Oh, I'm just saying. I'm speaking for myself. I here. have no problem eating mm-hmm. my food. So there's you're that. the one forcing Booyah. down spinach and fritters of all things. <laughs> no, that's how we get our son to eat vegetables. Okay. Mm-hmm. Guess sneak them in sometimes. So for me and the thing that I'm going to do new, it's still such a hard question because I feel like I, I've grown enough things where I'm going back to those things and not introducing something new. Um, maybe sorrel, sorrel is a thing that's on my list. Uh, spoiler alert, I didn't grow it this year. It was on my new things to grow in 2022 and it didn't make it. I had it from a garden friend's garden and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like really? I was dancing in their garden space. Wow. And I just didn't get it out. I have to actually look. Let me, I'm going to set an alarm on my phone because I think you plant it in the, you can plant it in the fall for a spring harvest. Now, wouldn't that be something? Well, yeah, I've never even really looked into it at all. I'm going to. I'll now. check my seeds Booyah. as uh, my seed saving buddy. I may be shipping some your way. Hey, do it. You better hurry up. <laughs> um, so for me, also fruit trees. I'm putting in more mm-hmm. fruit trees. Uh, you know, f- so there's going to be a series coming up where we talk about um, gardening and homesteading. And I've stated on the show, I've stated on YouTube, like I'm like, I feel like I'm somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. But for me, having something that regularly produces with minimal effort Mm -hmm. is really important. And fruit trees add that, you know, I've I've had um, a strawberry patch for a couple of years and this year I got totally overgrown and I kind of just... To be honest, we're going to try and weed it out and see what happens. But I mean, I don't know. I think I'm just kind of all set on the strawberries. I'm just not getting the quantity to where it's really worth the effort to have that space. So, you know, so I'm kind of. Go ahead. I know your relationship with strawberries well, is painful. That too. I've seen. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> so I uh, have uh, one of my girlfriends sent me a text saying, are you gr-? She's like, B. Like it's capital letters, exclamation mark. Are you growing strawberries? And it's this whole meme about, um, I feel like I need to have more fruits and vegetables in my diet. And it's like, oh, I'll pick up some strawberries. Okay, I'll add them to my margarita. And I'm like, I'm barely growing enough strawberries to even top my margarita, let alone make a strawberry margarita or something. Um, But strawberries, I mean, they're not a forever perennial. You know, so at some point those plants, unless you've been rooting, you know, the runners, 
they're going to die out anyway, you know? So you, it yeah. could be at the end of its life, if you will, for those plants. Well, and we let the runners go wild, mm-hmm. basically, and that was our plan. But over time, I've just been like, you know, I think I'm good. I think I'm all set. I'm not overly worried about it. I feel like there's a better use for that space. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what that use is, to be completely honest with everybody. But there is definitely something that can be added but we're going to take out some fruit trees that just never really produced and we're going to add some in that have a very good i mean i put in one peach tree last fall and i got 60 50 peaches off of it something like that so the thinking is moving forward like hey we can add in another fruit tree another peach Mm -hmm. tree um i would love to have a plum tree but i have to see if they just grow good in my area that's Mm -hmm. really the biggest caveat to all of it is like is it going to grow good in my area and if it does then I'm game. And if it doesn't, then I'm not game. If I had fruit trees, I think I'd start off with peaches and apples. I think those are the two fruits that I see myself using the most of. Plums are really enjoyable. And maybe I've just never had a really, really good plum. But I don't know if I would. I know you can do all kinds of things, you know, plum pie and all that stuff, too. But I don't know if I'd want I'd have. I'd be able to eat and consume enough of those. I was in the store, one of the big box stores today, and I saw lime and lemon trees and they look beautiful. And so I turned it over and it was like, you know, Northern growers, don't let the plant freeze, like in all caps, you know, I'm just like, I literally, and I still love you if this is you. I've seen so many pictures and videos of someone with like one lime or one lemon and I know there's great satisfaction in that because when that first red tomato went red, I was just like holding it up like Simba, you know, in <laughs> the Lion yeah. King, right? So I get it. But I was like, you know, what you're saying? I just need l- less friction. I don't want to introduce something that I have to, you know, completely baby coming into this next year. I need wins on top of wins on top of wins. So I'm removing all of the things, as many of the things as I can that, you know, are risque. I'm going safe next year, baby. Look, beans and beans and greens. That's it. Well, you know, I had a friend who grew a lime tree and he brought it in in the mm-hmm. wintertime, but he only grew it for his gin and tonics. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. it. So he was, he was good. <laughs> I think he grew key limes to be exact. So he always had limes for his gin and tonics. Uh, my uh, ground cherries. Um, I have three plants in two in containers and one in the ground. And um, I'm not going to have enough to make jams or anything like that. But they are, they've been such a pleasure. Yeah. Like just walking around the garden, you know, and like I'm uber comfortable just taking it off the, you know, off the ground and unwrapping it and eating it. And I'm just like, sometimes you just need that, right? You know? Yep. Yeah. We're doing more ground chairs this year. I planted them in the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. So there's that. But, you know, I think I, I really hope everybody uses this time wisely and, even though the the garden's starting to wind down, I think it's still time for, I mean, it's a perfect time for us to, to switch from harvesting and managing problems to really like analyzing mm-hmm. and figuring out how we can get more out of our garden. Because that's what this whole series is about, is how can we get more out of our garden? And it doesn't, like Batavia said, it doesn't have to be poundage. Mm -hmm. It can be more pleasure, more variety, more poundage, you know, more meals, more Mm -hmm. preserving. However you want it to be, I think that's really important. I mean, I, I hate to think about looking at your garden as like, how many pounds did I get out of it? It's just, I feel like it's a, it's an unhealthy way to look at a garden. You know what I mean? Because you can get a whole lot of basil and be completely happy with that basil and it will equal a pound for the whole year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, or you can a a, a good example of that is that basil. I've been again on this quest and I've gotten it wrong each year. But shoot, all of the fixings that go along with the pesto is the what I'm really chasing. You know, like, I don't know if I could afford to grow enough basil, like a whole bed of basil, leading to making that much pesto, <laughs> leading to, you yeah. know, between the pine nuts or subbing in walnuts and between the cheese and the oil. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe I don't need a whole year's worth. Uh, but that's actually a, it's a good example of growing enough. Right. You know, so I like to do things like if I can have pesto for my garden once a month. You know, if I can make enough to basically put away 12 jars, like 
that's me getting more out of my garden. I've not been able to do that yet. That would be such a win. And that's a great starting point. And maybe I'll decide, you know, the following year, if I'm able to do that 12 jars, as an example, that, you know, I could have had, I could have had it a few more times, right? Then I could increase it or I could decide, you know, this waistline really doesn't call for, you know, uh, pesto pasta once a month, right? But that's a part of like, that's the thing I'm looking for. And in this moment, that's how I feel like I'm going to get more out of my garden. Well, you know, I grow four basil plants every year and we meet our desires (laughs) through that by freezing shout out to the freezing episode freezing small portions every month Mm -hmm. and then at the end of the year we have a big bag full of Mm -hmm. pesto so it's it's all about managing for me it's all about managing like my desire like i mean look i would love to just harvest all my basil and do it all at once but to consistently be doing it over and over or either at the end of the season just start really preserving it as much as i can you know i'll I'll trim one plant one week trim another plant the next week and over a month you can come back and do that for two months you know do that rotation and then you're going to be doing it and then your last harvest of all of it if you can get it then you can make a bunch so i think there's a bunch of ways you know and i mean the question becomes is how much basil do you really want to eat you know how much pesto i just told you i mean once a month i know i want a pint but i'm saying in general, when we think about preserving, we're like, we want to preserve as much as possible. I don't ever want to go buy pesto. And I mean, you know, that's a good thought. But at the same time, maybe it's not the best idea. Well, I tell you this for sure. Um, one of my, Another one of my girlfriends would send me a picture when she's in the grocery store. Like, I think this is the pesto. I have been looking for restaurant quality pesto for eons. All of the stuff in the jars, never cut it. Then I made it. I wonder where you can get then it. Then I made it. And I'm not trying to say I'm over in Italy, like, and try this. Yeah. yeah. But I am super satisfied with what I make at home. And so in turn, yeah. you know, I'd like to have pesto every morning with breakfast. No, okay. No, maybe not. <laughs> there it is. Every morning, Batavia's going to have pesto. <laughs> and then she's going to go to Patreon and she's going to sign up to be a patron. And then she's going to buy a t-shirt and help support the show and check us out on YouTube. You know how shocking it would be if my entire garden was just basil. (laughs) Uh, It would be crazy. All right, so until then, see ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.